Hello everybody and God bless you. My name is Jeremiah Emmanuel and I have a very special video for you today. In this, I'm going to be sharing a uh, dream that I received from the Lord a couple of years ago. It's February 23rd, 2021. And uh, I've been sitting on this for a little while, uh, just waiting for the right time to release it. And right now is the right time. So I'm going to share this dream with you now. If it seems like I'm just reading, it's because I've transcribed it just so I'd have everything here exactly the way that I'd remembered it. So um, I don't want you to think it's any less, um, or it's in any way disingenuous as I read it. it. It's just a transcript to help keep me on track with what I'm supposed to share with you today. And I'm very excited about it. So let's get into it. So you know from the title of my video, uh, what I've called this is The Children Shall Lead Them. And we'll get right into the dream that I've received. So in this dream, I was inside of a clinic where they were diagnosing various issues for people. It wasn't an ER or like a trauma center. It was more of a place where you'd go for a routine checkup. As I was sitting in the lobby area waiting for someone to attend to me, I saw myself watching television and realizing I didn't like what was on the television, I pulled out my cell phone to poke around on social media. All of a sudden, I looked over to my right and two benches away was the cutest little girl she was maybe three or four years old, and she gave me the biggest smile. Light beamed all around her as joy was felt in her presence. I smiled back at her and acknowledged her, just waving hi and, you know, saying hi quickly because I didn't want to creep anybody out. I went back to browsing on my phone, and I decided to turn on a teaching from Bill Winston. I didn't have the volume up very high, maybe 25% or so, but the little girl heard Bill Winston begin to speak, and it sparked a light in her that I'd not seen in our previous interaction. She ran over to my bench and sat right next to me, asking if she could watch the program with me. And my response to her was, oh, you want to watch this? I don't know if you'll like it because it's for adults. And she said, I know who that is. That's Bill Winston, right? To which I said, yes, yes it is. You know who Bill Winston is? And I was surprised. She said, yes, I like him. God's told me about him. I said, so you've watched him on TV before? And she said, no, but God's been telling me about him already. With her assuring me that she was going to watch with me no matter what I thought about anything, I saw that the TV in the clinic was Wi-Fi enabled, so I cast my phone onto it so we could watch it together on the big screen. I felt a tap on, the sho on my shoulder from the bench behind me, and when I turned around and looked at who it was, the person sitting behind me was none other than Bill Johnson, the pastor of Bethel Church in Redding, California. With a huge smile on his face, he looked me dead in the eye and said, you all are doing it right. Now, the dream was not without its opposition. In it, someone who was who is very familiar to me, I won't say who because it really has no bearing on the dream itself, but someone very close to me. They saw the little girl watching Bill Winston with me and got very upset, and they got mad at me for mirroring my phone onto the clinic television. They said that their concern was that somebody might see one of my messages pop up on the TV and that everyone would see private things from my phone. Now, I reminded them that the television is only going to play Bill Winston's message. It's not going to show my alerts. It's not going to show apps or anything, but the person that's close to me looked at the little girl with disdain and a hatred. After the dream was over, I asked the Lord what this all meant because in it, the little girl did not know who Bill Winston was, but she said that God had already been telling her about him. And this is what I received from the Holy Spirit. He said, we're moving into a time where I'm reaching directly into the hearts of those who are young and dear to me. In this last era, there was a season where I saw few fathers of the faith help defend the little ones. Only a few preachers were fa found faithful to do this, to speak against abortion, to speak against the plans of the enemy in your school curriculums, to fight what the enemy wants to do against our young. Most buckled under the pressure, not only did not even care about trying to raise up the younger generation, but to even put their shoulders against the newborns who will never be born into this world. In this next season, which is unfolding right now, I am partnering with those who will carry the heart of the Father to help to bring up a new generation of children who will already know things before you teach it to them. 
The pool of the deep things are already being placed in these little ones. They will have been given a knowledge beforehand of what you will teach them. In this current season of education of your children and of raising up children in the church, you will have to quit acting like they're solely dependent on you for information. Your role in their education will be to simply activate what I've placed inside of them. They will no longer just have a heart for discovery. They'll have a drive for destiny paired with it. Along with this, these children will no longer struggle to understand. They'll operate in a supernatural knowing with your words being the confirming second witness to what they've somehow already understood. The things I've placed in the deep of their spirits is going to connect with your anointed words from deep in your spirit, and it's going to raise them up to be the generation of giant slayers that I need today and hereafter. So that was the end of what the, the Holy Spirit spoke to me directly. Now, just a couple of things I want to highlight on, because I, I did write these down as notes that helps to understand things a little bit better from what was in the dream, the, the interpretation of it, so to speak. But I, the only thing I really want to hit on is the fact that both Bill Winston and Bill Johnson were in this dream. Now, again, both of these men of God are pastors. Uh, Bill Winston is a pastor of Living Word Church, I believe it's called in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, and Bill Johnson is the pastor of Bethel Church in Redding, California, which I'm, I'm sure most of you have heard of both of them. But what's very unique about them is that Bill Winston, he represents the word of faith and the anointing of prosperity, while Bill Johnson represents the adoration movement and an anointing to carry the supernatural wonders of God. Uh, and upon interpretation, what I got was that the marriage of these two different anointings will carry this current generation forward. This combining of streams, it, it's already happening, and several other prophets have talked about this, how there would be this convergence in these end times. So, what I wish to say about this, um, because I don't believe there's any further interpretation needed, the, the dream's pretty cut and dry. But what was exciting to me about it is that God's saying in this time, you can't operate thinking that children are solely dependent on you to learn. He's supernaturally getting involved in putting seeds of knowledge in them already. And then when we speak an anointed word, when we have our Sunday school services, uh, as we're raising our children in the word and to understand the things of God, not only will they catch on a lot quicker than they used to, but it will it'll spark a sudden explosion in them that they already know what you've taught them and that hearing it from you has helped to give them a container with which to understand it in. Now, some people may be saying, okay, well, uh, I want to hear where that happened in the Word of God, and, and I'm happy to share that with you. So in the Word of God, an example we have of this happening is in the, birth, the book of 1 Samuel. So Samuel, uh, he was born to a mother who was barren, and her vow that she made to God was that if he were to give her a son, she would give him to the church. He would be raised in the ways of God all of his life. And so Samuel is given to the priest Eli as a baby, and Eli raises him as his own in the temple as one of his children. Now, around the age of seven or eight years old, if I'm remembering correctly, um, Samuel, while laying in his bed one night, sleeping, hears a voice calling his name, and it turns out to be the voice of God. Now, it was very significant because at this time in Israel's history, the priesthood was very corrupt. They weren't operating according to the way the Bible said they were supposed to be doing things. The offerings weren't right. The conduct wasn't right. And Eli helps Samuel to discern that the voice that he's hearing is God's voice. Um, and God at that point had not had not spoken to his priesthood in Israel in quite some time. And so what happens is God actually reveals to Samuel, um, you know, that the current leadership in the priesthood, that they would all come to a demise because they did not follow God's ways. It would all be uh, pretty much wiped out in one day, which did end up happening several years later. So the point of it is we have to remember, and, and I love that I've been taught this in my church throughout all the time that I've been there, that there's not a junior Holy Spirit. It's not like Candyland where you have Candyland at the store and then Candyland Junior 
That's for littler kids to understand because they can't read and write and stuff like that. The Holy Spirit doesn't work that way. He's going to work with a willing vessel. And because, you know, even a child that gets saved is already an eternal speaking spirit, the Holy Spirit will work with them and tell them deep concepts of things. So really what I want to leave us off with on this is this is a wonderful dream. It's a beautiful dream. God's got an awesome plan. Uh, at the recording of this, it's February the 24th, 2023. And we can see seeds of this are popping up already, even though I had this dream two years ago. You can see where there's this giant revival happening, um, you know, amongst college campuses, different things like that that have broken out. Like Texas A&M, for example, they have students that are literally just gathered on the fields at the school and they're crying out to God and they're singing songs of worship and they're praying for each other. People are receiving healing. People are being saved. God's moving among the young people of this generation and it's going to go all the way down to the babies to the little children. So again, uh, take time to listen to this again. Pray into it. Say, thank you, Lord, that you've planted seeds of knowledge into my children and that I, uh, I get anointed words from you, God, that I can use to confirm what they've heard so they know that they're you know not mishearing, that they know they're hearing your voice, and it'll just sync up and it'll enable this current generation to be the strongest one we've ever seen on the earth. So, uh, yeah, again, I'm so honored to share this dream with you. And, uh, you know, it's been a long two years waiting to share this, but you always have to wait for when the time is right. What better time than right now seeing our young people uh, in America and around the world being affected than to speak to how God's going to touch even younger people than that. And they're just going to be so supernaturally blessed by what he wants to do with them and with us who will partner with what his intentions are. So I bless you in Jesus' name. Uh, again, pray into this, uh, receive it by faith, and ask God, what's my part? What do I do to come into agreement with what you're wanting to do amongst our children so I'm not left out, and so I'm helping them to get your plan accomplished in the earth, God? I want to do that. So again, I bless you in Jesus' name. I pray that you're having an awesome day. If you're not, it's going to turn around because you've heard that the Lord's delighting in the little ones, and that's that gives us all hope. It gives us all a plan. It gives us all something more to look forward to. And our darkest days are behind us. I know that beyond a shadow of a doubt. Our darkest days are behind us because we are one day closer to seeing the appearing of Jesus and his glory shown on the earth where all eyes are going to see him at one time. That's amazing. Now, you may be watching this video. You may be a subscriber who found a funny video or thought it was okay and you'd give me a like or a follow and you may be like well, I didn't know this guy was a preacher it, it's actually right at the beginning of my channel and I tell you that up front because I'm going to preach to you if you're going to watch me but you may be watching this video and saying well I don't I don't know this God this sounds really interesting but I'm, I'm not a Christian I'm not saved we can fix that right now the word of God says that anybody who will call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved so if you're out there and you've never received God into your life to live your life with you. I want you to know anything you've done wrong, he's not holding it against you. Jesus, his son, came to the earth. He died a painful and horrible death to pay the punishment for your sin so that nothing would keep you and God separated. So if you would, just say the simple prayer and you can receive God as your father and Jesus as your savior today. You'll just say, God, I've messed up. There have been times in my life where I didn't believe in you. I didn't care whether you were real or not. But no matter what, you never left me. You were always ready to receive me. So, Father God, I repent for my sins right now. I turn away from them. I receive what Jesus has done. I believe that he died and rose again and was raised from the dead to give me a new life. Thank you, Father God. I am in your kingdom now. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you guys. Thanks again so much for sticking with me for another video. Uh, I hope it's encouraged you and, and showed us how to all go to another level. And I, look, I just look forward to sharing the next one with you. Have an awesome day out there. And remember, God's got an awesome plan for your life. And there are thoughts for good and not evil. God bless.